Hey guys, welcome back to my lecture on vectors. So today we're going to continue our discussion on vectors. But first, why are we talking about vectors so much? Well, it turns out vectors are very important in physics. And that's because a lot of the different types of objects in systems that we study in physics can be described using these physical quantities called vectors that have both a magnitude as well as direction. For example, suppose I take this ball. So this ball is my object of study. And suppose I let go of my ball. Well, as my ball is moving downward, I can describe things like its motion, its location in space. I can describe even the way it interacts with other objects in the room using different types of vectors. For example, I can describe its location in space using our displacement vector. I can describe its motion in space using our velocity and acceleration uh, vectors. I can even describe the way this ball interacts with this marker using force vectors, right? So because this has a mass and this has a mass, they will feel a force, a gravitational force, due to gravitational fields that both of these guys produce. And that's exactly why when I let go of my ball, this, <coughs> this ball drops. <coughs> the ball drops because our ground, our mass of the Earth, creates a gravitational field, G. And this gravitational field pulls on this ball. That's exactly why my ball travels downward. And this force is a vector, just like our gravitational field is a vector. So the world around us, the objects around us, can all be described using vectors. The way they interact with other objects can be described using vectors. The way we interact, humans, with other people, when we shake their hand, when we push them, when we kiss them, those can be described using vectors. So vectors are really used to describe the way our world functions. And that's exactly why vectors are so important in physics. And that's exactly why we need to be fluent when it comes to the different types of operations that exist with vectors. So we spoke about adding vectors, subtracting vectors, we spoke about multiplying vectors, and we saw that we could use the dot product rule or the cross product rule. Now we're going to talk about another type of operation that we can do with vectors. So any vector can be broken down into its component form.